this is a real introduction. I mean, we're not getting to any content per se. You might even start to think as we go through, like, what exactly does that have to do with uh, theology? Um, it doesn't necessarily. It has to do with all learning. You know, I don't think that, you know, I'm the one that's set here to teach you how to learn. But these are just very general notions that help me. I always assume that some of you are on the same page I was when I was your age. So if it helped me, I assume that some of you are going to benefit from it. So that's all I'm really doing here. So whatever you see on the front slide are typically my objectives. Two very simple ones today. Just going to real briefly or broadly say what is learning and why we learn. And then I'm going to teach you what's known as the Eureka or the Aha experience. Okay. And we'll be doing puzzles before this is out. You'll see what I mean. All right. So on the left column, I will go into these more on the second slide. There's very little notes, trust me. These are what I call the enemies to education. All right. And they also will demonstrate on the right side what the goals of the purpose of education is. Now, if you thought grade school was to prepare you for high school and high school is to prepare you for college and college is to prepare you for job, you missed everything entirely, all right? Yes, all those things that are lesser should prepare you for what comes next. That's true, but that's not their purpose. Education and knowledge and wisdom and understanding, they're ends in themselves. Uh, so there are many people out there that I know, and you probably know, who never had a finished a high school education. My father never finished high school. He left in 10th grade. He was an educated man. Just wasn't formally educated, all right? There's a big difference. Many people can have formal education and still not be very wise. So no matter how many letters you have on after your name, it isn't going to really you know, vindicate you if you're not acting in a way that's responsible to the knowledge and information that we're given. All right. So our goal is, is to move from foolishness to wisdom. Look at that. That's like $1,000 graphics right there. Okay. Have you ever heard the phrase, um, well, we'll get it to the next one um, before I start on that. But with foolishness, we have to admit in a certain area that, that we, we are fools. I mean, you guys already have known there's probably things you said in the past, thought in the past, did in the past, that you feel stupid for doing, knowing, or whatever. Well, that never changes. That's just part of growth. We all do that. I can't believe I thought that. I can't believe I said that. Well, guess what? You didn't just mature. You grew in your understanding and your learning. Okay? That, that's a very good thing. That's what happens in education. That's what's supposed to be happening here. Um, ignorance. Have you ever heard the phrase, ignorance is bliss? Have you guys ever heard that phrase? Do you know the full phrase? Everybody only always knows that. And I only ever knew that at one time. The full phrase is this. If ignorance is bliss, then tis folly to be wise. That means, if ignorance is bliss, then only a fool would want to be wise. And we know that if you want to be wise, it's not foolish. So therefore, ignorance is not bliss. So when somebody says ignorance is bliss, gently correct them and say, no, actually it's not. Ignorance is not knowing, okay? We want to know, and there's a difference between information and knowledge. Um, I have the slide up here, but it also is on my door over there. All the disconnected dots are just various pieces of information. It's probably facing out. And in reality, that's all the information you can gather from Google, right? You can go there and find all kinds of things. Somebody has to put it into sync for you. We need to connect the dots. We could talk like that. So education moves us from ignorance to knowledge. And to say that you're ignorant is not rude, like you're ignorant. I know that that's a connotation of the word, but ignorance really means I don't know. So if a person says they don't know, good, because now you set yourself up to know. If you come in here thinking you know more than me, there's nothing I can teach you, then guess what? You will not be taught. You know, that you, you, you can't, I mean, this is a performance art on my part, right? It's not, I can't, I'm not a robot up here. And it's also something on your part. Uh, you know, you cannot, you know the old phrase, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink? That is true. So sometimes people think that a particular class or school, sometimes you hear these arguments in education, well, if the school's not doing good, you should hold the teachers accountable. Well, you guys know enough students that there are, sometimes there's nothing you can do, all right? I mean, there are bad teachers and there's good teachers. But if a student absolutely refuses to bend, participate, or to grow in education or knowledge, all you can do is keep trying, but you can't in the end. It's just like if any of you guys 
wind up having your own business like I did. You can go through the whole process of hiring employees. You can hire them. You can try to be the best employee you have. You can't make them work well. You can't make them. Uh, you could make them and put an ultimatum that you're no longer going to be employed, but you can't in the end make them actually do what you like. It's like that. So this is really like, a, a, you know, when you say like, um, uh, this is really like a project we both work on together, okay? And dullness of mind. Dullness of mind to understanding. Now, in, in this course, you will learn the definitions of understanding and knowledge, information, okay, you, and wisdom. You understand that those things are not the same, especially when we get into the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Dullness of mind doesn't mean you're, you're stupid, but everybody does have different competencies. Not everybody grasps every argument. If you don't grasp the argument, it's tough to understand what we're trying to say. You know, so sometimes people pick up, now, first of all, you might be very good in other subjects, and this may not be your strong subject, okay? It doesn't mean I'm a bad teacher. It doesn't mean that you're stupid. This means that this is not your forte, all right? It could be that you don't do so well in some other subjects, and this just comes easier to you. That's why I'm in this field, all right? This is a very abstract field. Now, I'm, when I say abstract, I am not saying that it's so obscure you don't know what you're talking about. That's not what abstract means. Abstract is not a lot of concrete things. The three abstract, and you don't need to know this, I mean, for this class, but the three abstract disciplines, you know, that are uh, mathematics, physics, um, and what we would say theology or metaphysics, all right? Now, in physics, even though it's abstract, we could still measure things. You know, we can measure the motion and, and um, stuff like that. In mathematics, we always have numbers. We have quantity and we have an extension. Here we have nothing. You know, these are like, these are like words and ideas that we're trying to put together. If you're like me and you're a very visual thinker, you're going to have to overcome that. The way I overcome it is I kind of draw, diagram everything. I have to. I try to offer that to you. And, you know, you'll see me constantly looking in the air. What I do is I'm visually putting four or five different ideas or concepts up there, and I'm thinking which one I need for this. It's you do what you need to do. Um, but nonetheless, this is what we're after, okay? So just to expand on those a little bit. When I say that the enemies of learning, uh, dullness of mind, we're just saying that the concept is difficult to grasp. Because it's difficult, don't give up. You know, perseverance is probably 90% of what you're going to, you know, accomplish in life. So stick with it. You know, it's like a math problem. You can look at it and say, oh my God, it's so hard. You know how people freak themselves out before they get started. I'm just asking you to hang in there. If you don't understand it right away, mull it over. Ask me. Let's say it in a different way. Maybe another student can tell you. Maybe you want to go and just, you know, go back and listen to the video. Maybe you want to just, like Google or Bing it. See if there's something else. Or look in the textbook. See if there's something else that matches there that helps you understand it. Because something is difficult to grasp doesn't mean it's impossible to grasp. It probably means it's worth more. You know, so some of the things that we're going to learn in this class are the higher things. I'm not saying they're the harder things to learn. But, you know, again, these are, I'll give you a lot of asides. And, you know, two things I'm going to do for you is, one, um, at the end of each uh, semester, I'm going to let you evaluate me. I just do that on all levels. And it's anonymous, so you can say what you want, all right? Um, and sometimes people are critical, saying you have too many side stories or too many um, analogies or too many side things. I'm trying to fill in the gaps without expecting you to, memor to, to remember those. Okay, that's what I'm doing here. So... Um, Sometimes I forget entirely what I'm even talking about. What the heck was I talking about? This is how bad it, good it is. Um, um. <laughs> oh, hold on. It'll come back. Probably not, but it could have been that important. All right? Uh, anxieties of life. Oh, I know what I was going to say. See, I knew it would come back. As a sign of the dullness of mind aspect, there, there's something called the three transcendentals, beauty, truth, and goodness. If I asked you, can you define beauty for me? Do you think it'd be easy? I don't think so. How about true? Not what is true. Can you define what, what truth means? How about goodness? Next semester, I'll even give you an easier one. Is everybody here human? Can you tell me what it means to be a human? Probably not. Isn't that funny? I mean, if an alien came down here and said, you know, what are you? I'm a human being. What's a human being? Uh, well, I'm not a giraffe. I mean, you're, we're going to start struggling. But th these are the most basic things. So the most important things in our lives, love, hope, joy, truth, beauty, goodness, liberty, justice, 
equality. These are the most important things. They're abstract ideas. How do you talk about them, right? That's what we're going to try to look at in this course. So anxieties of life. Here's something that I'd like to say about this. These are all good things. There's nothing wrong with entertainment. I'm a goodwill junkie. I know the way I dress. You can't imagine I buy these threads at goodwill, but I do. So that's a joke. You got a lot of this crap. Um, I, a big score yesterday, man. I'm a movie freak, so uh, the first three complete seasons of The Sopranos and the box set of The Godfather. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the entertainment that you enjoy, whatever it is. I mean, some entertainment's lousy, but for the most part, you know, it's enjoyable. Pleasure, something wrong with pleasure. I like pleasure, you know. Not, I like it more than pain. Material comfort, I don't like sleeping on rocks, you know. Nothing wrong with those things. Not whatsoever. But most of the problems in our life is when we have things out of balance, right? So we take the things that are not as important and we put them in front of the things that are important. They're called first things. Like, for instance, a person who has a drinking issue, right? There's nothing wrong with, wrong with drinking alcohol. But if you have a drinking issue, you can never appreciate just the, the joy and fellowship that comes from having a drink. You never appreciate that. Right, because you've missed the first thing. You know, so these entertainment issues, if, if you're so into it, I mean, if you're doing your games for five hours a day, trust me, you're missing something, all right? There's something missing in our life. If our old goal is pleasure and material comfort, marriages have been destroyed because people have sought after those things. Even, even jobs. I mean, could you imagine taking a job and then your boss comes to you with a big bonus and he's looking for to give you a raise and a promotion? You ever stop to think, wonder well, this is how it can affect my family? You know, maybe I have it pretty good right now. So you shake his hand and say, I really appreciate it, but I'm good. Well, I don't ask these things twice. Well, somebody will need it, you know. But, I mean, if you saw my family and when I have my time that I spend with them, you know, it doesn't match whatever that figure is. Thank you, though, you know. I mean, if you can say that one day, God bless you, right? Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with promotion. See, you're never choosing between two evils. Our choices is never, I wonder if I should get married or kill somebody. <laughs> We're not choosing between goods and bads, hardly ever. We're always choosing between competing good things. We have to figure out a way to iron that out. That's by us spending time thinking and not worrying about all these things in life that are boggling us down. You know, so you don't want to get on the conveyor belt. It's easy to do. Apathy. This is when you really don't even spend any time contemplating the world beyond your own existence. This doesn't mean you're narcissistic, although that person would be in this field. But it could just be that you don't care. Now, let me give you an analogy. Almost every analogy I use will be some relational thing because if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend or you don't, you still get it. If you and your girlfriend or boyfriend are having an argument, you're fighting, ah, whatever it is, he went with their friends instead of you and you're tired of it. That's communication. You're still communicating, right? You may not like it, but you're talking. Don't you at least like that better than if the other one pretends you don't exist, refuses to answer your text, whatever else you're doing, will not. You call, refuses to answer, sees you, walks the other way, pretends you don't exist. How long do you think that goes on before you can't take it? That's apathy. You know, that's hard to reach. That's a hard thing to get at with somebody. This is an enemy, right? So why, sometimes this doesn't come by itself. Sometimes it's because a person and I might be overwhelmed and I don't have time to contemplate anything. Oh, heck, I don't care. Sometimes they just don't care. Sometimes they don't care because of the demands it might make in your life. Like you want, only one period of your junior class for me did the uh, discussions for the diocesan, or I guess it's just like Pope Francis' survey. And I just asked the first period I had. They said they'd do it, fine. So one of the questions was, uh, you know, how does the Catholic Church look to non-Christians or non-Catholics, okay? And I said, you know, you got to get comfortable with me. I don't call people's parents and write stuff down next to your name because they said something I think is stupid. I need, as long as it's not vulgar or offensive, just say it. So what did I hear? It's like a cult. Uh, they're too strict. You know, they don't change. Blah, blah, blah. went on and on, right? Okay, well, thank you. I wrote all that stuff down, you know? So I tell them, you know, I'm going to need you, as we go through this course, I will address all those things in a way you didn't see, but I need you to have an open mind. And everybody thinks they have an open mind, but we don't know what that means, right? It just sounds good. It sounds like, well, I'm easy to get along with. But you don't keep your mind open for everything, right? G.K. Chesterton said, these are my asides. 
G.K. Chesterton said, an open mind's like an open mouth. You keep it open just long enough to bite down on something good. So the reality is, at some point in your life, you've made a determination on a truth and you're not going to change it. And I can give you a very easy description. Should we be open-minded that maybe racism isn't a bad thing? Should we be open-minded about that? Why? Because it, it, it's, it's one of these eternal truths that we don't have to bring up for discussion. What does the Catholic Church offer a young person? And why is it necessary for us to go to Mass on Sundays? Now, it'd be nice if you have an open mind about that. You know, Those types of things. So we have to, but you can't reach that if a person's apathetic. You can't reach it if you're so worried about your meat after school or your friend or your girl. I mean, you know what I mean? We, we, you know, here's my advice, and it's hard, right? But when you're here, you might as well be here because what else are you going to do? I mean, I'm like this. I sit in meetings. I sit in classes, and I'm thinking about 50 different things, and at some point I, re I realize I'm here. I might as well at least be here, right? So anyway, these are the um, what I'll call the three enemies of learning. Okay, that's all the notes. Now we get other stuff. Anybody know who this guy is? Besides being clean? No, but pretty close. No, no. But you guys are all in the same neighborhood. Um, well, I, oh, there it is. I gotta find it, not for this, but for what comes after this. Nope, oh, that's locked. Dude. That's not gonna work. Okay, anybody else want to try? Archimedes. Does anybody know anything about Archimedes or the Eureka experience? I'll give it to you in a nutshell. So he was perplexed with a problem the king gave him. The king was having a new crown fashion, so the story goes. And if I get a little inaccurate, it still makes the point. Uh, and the, and the, obviously the king wanted this thing out of pure gold. Well, okay, if you had a perfect cube, you can measure its volume and its space, and you can determine the density, and you can say, hey, there's something else mixed in there with gold. But when you have a crown with all the filigree and all the various shapes, and what do you do? This was his, his problem. So he gets in the tub, he sits down, he sees the water raised, and he starts thinking, oh, I've displaced a certain amount of water. So if I take the crown and measure this, I can then use the, measure, the amount of water displaced to determine the volume of this. And he was so excited, he, he just so the story goes that he jumped out of the tub naked, of course, yelling Eureka and ran through the whole city of Athens. All right, so why do I bring this up to you? Because uh, we're going to do some um, what I call the Eureka experiences or the aha experiences. I just want you to, to get the feel for it. Um, it's what happens in education. In other words, all the dots are there. And eventually, eventually, we're going to connect some of them. And you guys will do it. You'll go, oh, nah, I, oh, I get it. You know, some of you. If you're Greek, my yell, Rika. But my point is, you'll get it. Now, here's my experience. When I was in high school, you know, I was a jerk. I, I just wasn't paying attention to some of the teachers that were just simply, I shouldn't have been paying attention. One teacher in particular, um, Harvard Rhodes, this guy uh, had no formal education in teaching. He was a physicist, I think, that worked, I know he worked for NASA. And he was retired and became an English teacher. And uh, he taught us um, Shakespearean sonnets. Not exactly top of my list when I was a senior in high school and I'm worried about football, that kind of thing, right? Uh, and I, I didn't appreciate what he did for about a good six or seven years, but now it's changed everything. It's one of those, what they call the teaching moments. So he would, him and his wife in the morning would do cryptograms. You know, cryptograms, you'll do one today, where you try to, you, you know, you try to, this letter means that letter and it means that letter all through. They're kind of like, you know, um, Regis puzzles and other things. Well, for the first two weeks of school, I'm giving you an explanation why I'm doing this. He gave no explanation. We just started doing these cryptograms. I'm in a senior English class. What the heck is this guy doing? You know? And after two weeks of doing this, he said, now let's work on an English sonnet. Okay? And then we got it. When you guys do puzzles, and you'll see the experience here, um, it, does, it looks like it's nonsense. It's just all scattered. You don't, I don't even know what I'm looking at. And then all of a sudden, somebody starts saying something, and then before you know it, it seems to make sense. And then it clicks at the very end, kind of like when you're doing like those word puzzles you see like on television show game shows. You know, once they have enough letters there, it all fits in. And you're like, I know the word. That's an aha experience. That's the learning moment, all right? This guy really was a genius. He, um, he taught himself Middle English. You know, this is back, I don't know what, 
century, 13th century, just so he can read sonnets in the original. Now, I'm sitting there thinking, who does that? You know, and plus it sounded like it was garbage, you know. Literally, he'd be up there going, hoffing, flopping, 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 flopping. I'm thinking, what is this guy like the chef from the Muppets or something, you know? <laughs> and he made his own device. He was like a, like a little private engineer, personal engineer, where we had the projector, you know. It wasn't like this, you know. When they brought in the projector, everybody's like, yeah, movie day, you know. <laughs> well, when he brought in the projector, he made, and I'm going to mimic it because this is what kind of sound like. He'd go, and it would turn on and off the, the projector. And this is back in the late 70s, early 80s. That was pretty good, right? And nobody, could, everybody would always try it. Nobody could do it. Well, if I'm nothing else, I might have been stupid, but I was perseverant. So I stayed after school for like four days, and I figured it out. I sat there, just, just I'm talking for like an hour. And then finally, I was making that thing go on and off. I'm thinking, okay. So we're all sitting in class. I didn't tell anybody. We're all sitting in class. He goes, Sss. thing comes on. I go, Sss. shuts off. He looks around, turns it on, I go, and I shut it off. <laughs> Who did that? Well, you know, nobody wants to fess up. I didn't want to get it. I'm thinking, okay, you know, my friends, I'm not going to throw them under the bus. It was me. How'd you do that? He said, I just stay after school and practice. How long did it take you? I said, days. He said, how far away can you do it from? I don't know. We started having a competition. <laughs> he thought that was the coolest thing in the world, you know. Um, now, that was my only little connection with him, but I really got a kick out of the guy. You know, I, I, just, I really had a lot of respect for him. He passed away many years ago. So anyway, let's, let's see if we can't try a few of these. First of all, I didn't realize I was up there. That's the graphic I have on the outside of my door. All this disjointed bits of information that in your age, because we live in the digital age, I mean, it can happen for me too, but you grew up in it. You know, Google, Bing, all those places can give you a lot of facts at the tip of your fingers. Information is not knowledge, okay? Um, vocabulary is not knowledge. It's information. We need to connect all these things, nonetheless. This is one of those word picture puzzles. What do you think that says? Now, first of all, you guys will learn real quick. Especially when we do dialectic. I don't want anybody make fun of other people in this classroom. I'm the only one that does that. No, I won't do it. I'll come down on you. I will climb on your back and ride you like a monkey if you make fun of other people. So what I want you to do is I want you to feel free. I want you to feel free to blurt stuff out. And it's not going to sound stupid. That's the, this is how this works. Okay? You've got to say stuff out. It's going to sound stupid. Somebody's going to improve what you did. Somebody's going to correct it. And eventually somebody's going to get it. Okay, so what do you think that is? Sailboat. It's not part of it. Just keep going. Well, I was going to, I don't know, actually, no, I was going to say boat for sale. Because it's for. You're, you're very close. She's very close. Boat for sale, right? Boat, and there are four sails. Four boats. Four but what kind of boat? Well, that, you know, that might work, but that's not what I'm after. What kind of boat? Sailboat for sale? No. I feel like sinking because it's going down. Yeah, well, that's pretty intuitive, but no. I mean, okay, first of all, I got this wrong. This isn't my puzzle. I got this wrong, and you'll, I'll tell you why at the end. So if you don't get it, I didn't get it either. I got boats for sale, and then I didn't realize what else they were going for. But let's see if anybody gets it. What shape are those boats in? An owl. Well, okay, forget about the word, just the word boat. What shape are those in? Flag boat. Well, uh, that's, I don't know, I don't know what a flag boat is, so maybe that oh, does work. <laughs> but, like, are they in a particular line? Well, line. line. What, what kind, what would be like a, a kind of boat? Oh. Not a line boat, you'd have a, they're in a... Rowboat. Uh, See? Aha! Uh, uh -huh. uh -huh. See, that's it. <laughs> that's the learning moment. Now, here's my problem is, I didn't see it as a row, I thought it was a column. So I couldn't get past yet. Yeah. Rowboat for sale. But, okay, I know it's stupid. Oh, <laughs> there That's okay, man. Okay, so just keep in mind, as we move on in the course, that's where I'm driving you. Okay, that's where I'm driving <laughs> What do you think? Okay, so I didn't teach you guys... Um, theology in freshman year. But when you study scripture, you always start with what is the literal thing. Like if you talk about Jesus was a shepherd, what does that mean? What's a shepherd? That's always the first thing you ask. Who's Jesus? What's a shepherd? 
So you look at the, what word is there? Spin. And what's wrong with spin? It's spun around. It's spun around. It's backwards. So say it all together. Spin backwards. Spin backwards. It's just spin backwards. All right? All right. Or if you want to say it backwards, spin. You know? It's one of my dance moves. Okay, start with what you know. Education always starts with what you know. What word there do you know? Film. Film. Okay, now start there. Where is four? In the middle. Four and film. Say say quick. What? Foreign film. Four and film. You win a million bucks. Pair. All right, now. <laughs> okay, see, now the anxiety of life kick in. I don't have time for this. Dullness of mind, right? What is going on? Or apathy. Boy, I don't give a crap about that, okay? This is where education has to take a little bit of time. So here's how this works. That bottom one. All the V's are going to equal S. Unfortunately, there's only one V. All right? So, that's our S. Now, here's how you do this. You're going to have to just try different letters. You guys might be convinced that that says two or something like that, and then you're going to find that it doesn't, or that's going to say as or is, and you're not going to know which, and, and you're going to have, we're going to constantly have to rewrite and rewrite. And then once it gets close, now the only hint I could tell you, and it probably won't help you too much, but it might help you, this is a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. on love and hate. All right? So here's my suggestion. That's either got to be an A or an I. And the G, you, you know, it's got to be N's or O's, right? So you guys tell me, and let's give it a whirl. Yeah. Well, all I'm going to do is put what's there. I'm not going to tell you if it is or not. But U is. As what? I. Okay, so all U's are I. Let me make sure there's no other ones. Oh, there's a bunch of S's. And S's. G's are always. So S is A, right? Oh, wait. S is, um, yeah, we said S is what? A. Yeah, G, G is definitely O. Yeah. Because then that, yeah. And G is O? Do we think S is A? Where are you getting this from? Wait. Is this or A or All right, so, so far. Is, okay, what would this word, what could this be? Two. Two. There's always one. <laughs> okay, so R is T. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm not as quick as you guys. Do I have all the R's? No. All right, I feel like easy. And you said the first one's hate. So let's do the E's. E's are H. N is E. <laughs> Oh, we got a problem. Well, maybe that still work. I don't know. Nah, my big. What are you thinking? Hate is two. Well, I don't know. Hate is two. What? You got to just try something. Hate is two treat. No, it could be the T. Very good. So what are you thinking? Well, it could be. Maybe we said it wrong. Maybe we said it wrong. No. Yeah, we know for sure the T and the O are thinking. Yeah, like those are What ends in E? Just start with words. I guess we're just guessing. Treat. Okay, but it doesn't always sound like E. E-A-T doesn't always sound like E. Well, so if we make, 
Wait, L's are G's. A's are R's. There you go. He got it. Say it again. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Okay. Well, just so you... All right. Okay, so now, you guys did pretty good. I got to tell you, years past, there were entire periods that didn't even get close. They were another, I want to retire their shoes for them. But you guys did really good. So the idea is this, is that it just took a little bit more patience, a little more perseverance, right? But as you get the whole thing together, now think back how this particular teacher taught us a poem or, or a sonnet. You look at parts of it, and it doesn't make sense. It just looks like this is too much. I don't know what the whole thing means. And he would kept insisting, relax, look at one line, see if you can, grab something that has meaning, and then that meaning will articulate and spread out for the rest of the poem. And then all of a sudden, somebody would raise their hand and say, I think I know what that sonnet's about. And they would say, and we'd all go, oh. And he'd say, Eureka, you got it, okay? You did good. That's it. I don't know how much time we got, but you're done.